someone as fast as her is over a hundred. Let's pick up the pace and catch up to her. What a long and mildly ungrammatical title. And why is the cover so colorful? Is this your first time seeing a light novel, ma'am? Oh, they're the most popular of books nowadays. Would you like me to recommend something? <sighs> Fine. One shouldn't judge a book by its cover after all. May we browse through the books here? Of course. Why don't you try this one? It's Outlander Brigade, when the wind of death blew towards the blonde samurai. <sighs> I heard that this book's author describes action in vivid detail. Hmm... Now I've only skimmed through a few pages, but it feels like it's all fight scenes. There are only subjects and predicates, and the syntax is a tad simple. Uh, subjects? Predicates? The protagonist just ends up fighting in every scene with no proper build-up. Will anyone even enjoy a story that's only comprised of fights? Um, how about... Ah... The good thing about being reincarnated as a hilly churl is that I only need to eat Sunsetias to become stronger. Uh, a reincarnation isekai story? Those are pretty popular right now. Isekai? What in the world is that? Also, why does it become stronger by eating Sunsetias? Tropes? Ah, those fictional rules used to push the plot forward, yes? They're definitely effective in achieving a distancing effect. Uh, <laughs> sorry. What is this distancing effect? However, this book doesn't explain how reincarnation correlates to becoming stronger. Such an illogical role will affect the coherence of the story. Will readers really accept this? Uh, how, how about this? I had to fight tooth and nail to get this in stock. Oh, that's the latest volume of Onibudo! Hmm, now that's a rather normal title length. Oh, Kale. Do you like this series? Y yes but I don't like it that much. <laughs> uh, madam, are you going to use this series as teaching material? Let me see. The dialogue flows quite well, but there are too many phrases here that I don't recognize. Third eye of perception, illusory mirror, and so on. Aren't these terms that are tied to tropes? <laughs> I also thought those names were strange when I was reading them. It's impossible to derive the meaning of these phrases in isolation. Also, their morphological properties are quite pedestrian, really. Or did the protagonist purposely create these strange names to disorient their foes? So there's no deeper purpose? Hi. It's quite hard to understand stories written these days. You're right. It's such a weird book, <laughs> but you keep wanting to read the next page. <sighs> Even the most popular book in Sumeru back then had greater depth than anything written today. Yes, a Bahumano researcher wrote it while researching folk legends. The plot had many twists. The world building was fantastic, and even the writing could withstand scrutiny. When it was still being published, many people in the academia were reading it. Even the sages back then all described the story as a timeless classic. The series must have concluded after so many years, right? Perhaps it's even more popular now. Is there a book like that in Sumeru? I've never heard of such a thing before. What's the title? It's called Tales of Shariar. Do you sell it here? Tales of Shariar? Um, I don't think I've heard of that before. Hmm. When was it published? About a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago? Are you pulling my leg? What sort of book can remain popular for 100 years? The Legend of Antara is popular to this very day, isn't it? I just heard someone telling it a few days ago in a cafe. If an old story like that is still being shared, then Tales of Shariar must be even more popular. Even if that is the case, I really don't carry that book here in my store. What? Hmm. Is that because of the Academia's strict control over books in recent years? I can't believe they've allowed the people of Sumeru to become so uncivilized! How can they not know about the Tales of Shariar? Tales of Shariar? Hmm... Oh, wait! I, I think I heard an antique seller on the other end of Treasure Street mention that name before. I mean, it is a book from a hundred years ago. 
Why don't you try asking for it there? Tales of Shariar is considered an antique now? How could the Academia have let such an excellent work of literature be forgotten like this? Traveler, Kale, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's meet at the antique cellars. Madam, wait! Oh no, this is bad. <sighs> you asked me why I'm scared of Madam Farazan, right? It's not because I don't know how to respond to her kindness. It's because... I'm afraid of that ancient language she researches, because I can barely understand any of it. What if she uses ancient text as teaching material? Even so, what if researchers from a hundred years ago like to use ancient languages in their books? We've got to catch up to her! A book that was popular a hundred years ago. Doesn't sound like something that'd be popular now, to be frank. of Tales of Shariar. Wow, you actually found it. I never thought this book would ever get sold. All right, that's our teaching material secured. We also now know what to call this course. Analysis of Classical Texts. After all, this book is definitely worthy of being called a classic. C can... can I take a look? <sighs> Luckily, the language being used here isn't ancient at all. I can recognize a few words here and there. Huh? But why aren't there pictures in this book? As long as the writing is good, readers won't need any illustrations to imagine the scenes. Worry not. I shall thoroughly explain the difficult sections. You'll like this book. I know it. <sighs> After all this time, I wonder if Aaliyah and Aziz ended up together. <gasps> And who obtained the Desert Gem in the end? Sir, do you have the subsequent volumes of this series? Uh, I don't think so. Is that so? And here I thought I could finally read the ending. Never mind, I'll keep searching for the later volumes myself. If I'm to use it as a teaching material, it's better to start earlier in the series. Where are the first four volumes? Why aren't they all together? Uh, I... Don't have those either. Actually, this is the only volume I have. Is this series really that popular? No, no, no. It's not popular at all. Rather, there's absolutely no demand for it. No demand? Impossible. Back then, I'd come across at least three groups of people talking about it during a single stroll at the Academia. Seriously? No one told me that this book was anything special when I first got it. Where did you get this from? Can you still contact the seller? I'm afraid not. This book was sold together with a whole bunch of antique furniture. I didn't even notice it initially. Otherwise, the mantra would have come knocking. Wait, is this book actually worth a lot? <laughs> it can't be, right? <laughs> That's impossible. No matter how strict the academia was, there's no way Tales of Shariar could have fallen into such a state. I do remember a passerby skimming through the book a few days ago. However, he simply sighed and left. He sighed? Why would he react like that? Given the quality of Tales of Shariar, he should have been entranced after a single glance. I'm sorry, Traveler, Kale, please give me a moment. I'd like to look through this book first. Why is there another misunderstanding between Ali and Aziz? Also, why is there no mention of the Desert Gem at all? And a new character is introduced with no foreshadowing at all? Also, what are all these new names and terms? Is this really the tales of Shariar I know? <sighs> well, that passerby reacted in much the same way. It's Mada from the cafe over there. You know, the fellow who spends all day telling the legend of Antara. Since that's also a very old story, maybe he knows a thing or two about that, uh... Tales of... Uh, whatever it's called. Then let's go ask around at the cafe. Huh? Um... Madame Farzan? Huh? Oh... Yes. Let's go.
Anyway, is there anything else here that's caught your eye? As long as the price is reasonable, I can give you this book as a bonus. Another day, another empty room. Excuse me, but are you Mata? Yes! Are you here to listen to my story? Uh, well, we actually came to ask about something else. <sighs> I see. S sorry It's fine. I'm used to it, more or less. So... How can this terribly unpopular storyteller help you? Do you know about Tales of Shariar? Huh? Tales of Shariar? <laughs> Why, I can barely remember the last time anyone talked about it. My master always talked about how incredibly popular that book used to be. However, I tried reciting a few chapters of it at the cafe, and I found that it's even less popular than the Legend of Antara. Your master? Yes, the one who taught me how to be a storyteller. He said that Tales of Shariar was written by his master's master's master. He also said that this great-great-grandmaster was an academia researcher, and that even the sages liked the series. He wrote four volumes back then, and the reviews just got better and better. You couldn't find a single person in Sumeru who hadn't read his books. And then? What happened next? Why doesn't anyone know about Tales of Shariar now? Oh, it's hard to tell when it comes to trends. One day everyone likes stories like that, and the next day their tastes change completely. Instead of writing a proper ending, this great-great-grandmaster kept trying to extend the story. To tap into popular trends, he added a lot of tropes. Then, starting from the fifth volume, the reviews started to go downhill. How could that be? Then what happened to Tales of Shariar in the end? In the end? There's no ending. The great-great-grandmaster tried to write a few more volumes, following whatever trends were popular at the time, but the trends kept changing right as he published his books. He got so infuriated that he stopped writing altogether and focused on his research instead. What? So there's no ending? The readers didn't care? <laughs> By that time, only a very small number of people were reading Tales of Shariar. Anyway, my master probably exaggerated. How could a work possibly have been that popular? The only tangible thing my great-great-grandmaster left is the original draft of Legend of Antara. He also left behind many theses from his research phase. When my master talked about Legend of Antara, he'd even quote from those theses. <sighs> my master is a much better storyteller than me. Even when we're telling the same story about Antara, he's always able to draw in a huge crowd. But even he won't recite tales of Shariar due to its ever-changing writing style and its <clears throat> lack of an ending. So, Antara's story is the one that lasted through the years? Well... Not even sages can definitively ascertain the quality of something like a story. In the end, only time can separate the classics from the fads. Only time? Madame Farazan? It's been a hundred years. Perhaps some things I once believed to be great aren't so after all. find a lot of famous books at first, but in the end, I realized that I couldn't get into them. No matter how good those stories are, I can't improve my skills if I can't bring myself to read them in the first place. I think the best books for me are the ones I like. Huh. Indeed. That is true. 
Readers' interests and trends of a time are not things that are so easily predicted. What was popular a hundred years ago could be completely forgotten in modern times. And yet, a hundred years, as far as history is concerned, is but a blink of an eye. If Tales of Shariar hadn't chased after trends and instead stuck to its original style from start to finish, it might have stood some chance of gaining renewed popularity. No, even if that didn't happen, at least it would be a work that was true to itself. Huh? Our conversation just got a lot more serious. Uh... I don't really get what you're talking about, but it does sound sensible. Looks like I also have to hang in there and tell Antara's story well. <laughs> How unseemly. I almost got carried away because of a single book. Well then, we should get back to the matter of our teaching material. It looks like we can't use Tales of Shariar now. No, it's much too old. <laughs> oh. Kale, you found a book that you liked at the bookstall, yes? Um, yes, but I don't really... Then we'll use that book as our teaching material. Now that I think about it, using a book that you like is the most suitable choice for teaching you how to read. As for the academia, as long as we come up with an appropriate course name, we should be able to get away with this. My, it sounds like you've dealt with the academia before. Let's go with that. Now then, let's return to the book vendor in a bit and buy the latest volume of this Onibudo for Kale. Ah, uh, but if I wish to use it as teaching material, I have to read it first. Huh? Um... Uh... Speaking of which, other than Third Eye of Perception and Illusory Mirror, I also espy some unfamiliar phrases from the reader's messages at the back of the book. Such things as... <clears throat> Even if it reminds me of my dark history, I still can't help but be drawn in by the story. And... The author has written all the things that I only dare whisper into a tree hollow. Why do people use dark history to refer to awkward or embarrassing memories? Is this some slang that was invented in the last century? If one of our learning objectives was researching linguistic changes over the past hundred years, it might make it easier to get these books approved as teaching material. Oh, I can tell you what that's all about. Apparently in their youth, some people used to imagine themselves as someone burdened by fate, fighting against the world, etc. But as they grew older, they started to become embarrassed by such memories. Some would write those fantasies into novels, while others would entrust such tales to tree hollows. M Mata, y you know, I suddenly have the urge to hear a story about Antara. Huh? Why so suddenly? <laughs> I knew it. There will always be people who love the golden oldies. <clears throat> now. Let me tell you all about the ancient hero, Antara.